if that's real to you. You know what I mean? Listen to what they're saying. Don't just bob your head to the beat. Peep the game. And listen to what I'm saying. Hold us accountable for it. I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions, its name's been changed since then, I'm not even sure what to call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records, it owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it on back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It's one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby, Crosby, Still Nash and Young. And I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood, and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store, and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know if certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, because you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the coven conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He said, the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He says, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. I said, thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and it's placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the eight tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand-chosen witches and witch wizards and a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. As I tell many Christian parents, you can go home and count your kids' records, probably yours too, and count how many demons at least are there. If that's too hard for you to believe, I'm sorry. That's why they do it. Now listen to me. This is why rock music's addicting. Have you ever seen kids that got rid of their music? They go around like this. They can't wait to find a rock station somewhere and they sneak off just like getting a cigarette or a fix because it's addicting. That's why they can't give it up. The rest of the conversation was this. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. If you give the permission for the spell to work, being a Christian won't block it. And rock music is not just a song. It is supernatural music that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. Now, although the devil's music's par is the music and God's music is the words, much of the songs are written in what we call witch language. Give you kind of an idea. You talk, on, many of you talk on a CB, unless you know what you, what a smoky is and uh, a tin four and uh, uh, a front door and back door and rocking chair and these type of things, you don't know what you're talking about. Same with witches. When you're in the first and second level, you have to learn over 2,000 words that said by anybody else means something totally different than when you say them. Elton John has said he's never written a song or sung a song that wasn't in witch language. Now, I want to show you something. See how many kids in here will be honest and adults. How many remember and have heard at least several times a song called Hotel California? Somebody tell me what it meant. 
quickly. Somebody tell me what it meant. Huh? That's pretty close. But from the words, what did it mean? Well, that's more of a guess. See, most people can't tell you. That's why when people do drugs and they listen to songs in which language, they get some of the meaning. But most of the time, they can't tell you. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road? How about The Destroyer by Kiss? Can anybody tell me what it's about? Kiss said in it, kids, tell your parents. They're talking about Helder Skelter. Beatles sung Helder Skelter in which language nobody knew what it meant. Manson did because he belongs to the process. Helder Skelter is a several, several thousand year old word. Most of the music is either about Helder Skelter or a place called the Night Winds, which is what Hotel California is about and different doctrines of witchcraft. You listen to them, your parents let you listen to them, and they have no idea. Kiss openly bragged how they were gaining control of people through their music because the people played their music. They told how they didn't form their own group. Their church, because they were ordained ministers of the Satanist church, placed them together. And that's how most of the music is done. David Crosby, when him and Crosby, still nice and young, produced the record Two Way Street. They ordered the Principality of Medes to order demons of rebellion to go into the record, and everybody that heard it would be rebellious against law and order and government. And it was one of the reasons for the great upheaval in the 60s was that one album, and they take open credit for it. Uh, I have personally talked with Johnny Todd on the base of Jack Chick's recommendation. I uh, have known Johnny Todd now for more than four years, and my having known him for some six months, I believe that Johnny Todd is a genuinely converted man, saved by the grace of God out of the depths of Satanism. And if it feels uncomfortable, then you are probably not in the right place. You know, just don't sell your, sell your soul, you know? And, and men and women do this. You know, I would say even to young boys. I've seen young boys get turned out in this industry, too. No. They scared to lose their fucking house. Or they scared to lose their record deal. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. I'm spaced out, dog. I be on that moon talk. I wonder if God asked Mike how to moonwalk. way back to the beginning of rock and, and so you know had, had we sold our soul to the devil uh, how else can you explain us being here on a well, yeah, 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 yeah. you're doing really well now but didn't you release a cd like almost 10 years ago um yeah i mean i released a gospel record when i was 15 um because i grew up in uh you know a household where all i ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so i kind of sang about you know, what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Because I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Well, that's gonna happen. Yeah, we sell our soul. Well, that's, that's an awful way to live. So why not sell my soul and go on Jersey Shore? That's what I did. Grant is my only true down home. I made a deal with the devil and sold my soul. I sold my soul for a chance to kick it in bed. I sold my soul to the devil, and the price was cheap. And yo, it's cold on the The boy in the bubble who never could adapt. I'm trapped. If I could go back, I never would have rapped. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. I the boy in the bubble who never could adapt. I think it's too late for praying. Hold up, her voice spoke to me and it slowly started saying, Bring your lifestyle to me, I'll make it better. How long will I live? Eternal life better for hell. Who will I be the G that I want? I'll make my better than you can imagine or even dream. Yeah, so relax your soul. Let me take control. Close your eyes, my soul. My eyes are closed. They don't want to, and they're, you know, Gaga, we can't get, you know, the, the frequency's weird, and, you know, it's sounding a little bit strange, and I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. Do you have a kitchen on the bus you cook? Um, uh, there's no kitchen on the bus, but, you know, we'll stop in certain places, and by then... You're still out here doing these songs, you know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand.
What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and, in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. Bob Dylan has been nominated. I had to ask some friends because I was hearing a lot about her, and so they told me, you know, who she was and what she was doing. And I come from the school of thought. There's just, there's just some things that the, that the, that the public just shouldn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like things that happen between two people, a wife and a husband, girl. Uh, I just don't think that it's for mass consumption. I just have always felt that way, and I just think that. The whole idea of celebrity and fame has become really convoluted and, you know, kind of bastardized, like whereas fame used to be the byproduct of success and now it's the ultimate goal. And you, if, you're, if your ultimate goal is to be famous, then you're going to do a lot to, do, to get there, like sign your name in blood in a contract with the devil. Like you're going to end up in a, on a one-way street and it's going nowhere. Like that's just the truth. I've seen, I've seen so many people like forsake their 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 moral code and their value systems just for a little bit of fame and it's it's not worth it at the end of the day it's really not worth
Coincidence? I think not!